Well, yeah. <laughs> so, I just finished my long-term review of Debian less last week, and I was looking for what to do next for my next long-term review, and there was really only one answer, and that is NixOS. I have been putting this off for a very long time, and really not because I have something against NixOS itself, but because their community is kind of pushy. I'm just going to put that out there. They're kind of pushy, and that's really kind of being nice about it. I, I have heard... Uh, multitudes of people, like hundreds of people probably, telling me that I should use NixOS or I should try NixOS or why haven't you tried NixOS or any of these things that you saw in the comments there at the beginning. Uh, I've heard that for a couple of years now at this point, and the more people asked me to try NixOS, the less interested I was in trying it, just simply because I was being a petty, you know, guy, I guess. <laughs> and, and, you know, I just... I lost interest in it because it was so popular. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But anyways, that t the time for me being petty has to be over. And NixOS is the thing that's going to be next. Now, the plan here is this. Just like it was with Debian, I'm going to install it as my main daily driver on my laptop, which I use every single day. And I'll install it on the secondary hard drive of the computer that sits in front of me, the one that I record on. And I'll, I'll use it there less than what I use it on the laptop because OpenSUSE is the main distro here, but and that's the way that's going to stay. But I'll be using NixOS every single day, and I don't know how long the long-term review will take. The Debian one lasted for five months. I don't know if I'll go as long on NixOS, or maybe I'll go longer. I have no plans as to how long I'll be there right now. Uh, other than I'm going to give it a fair shake. I'm going to install it on hardware, like I just said, and I'm going to learn as much about it as possible and see how well it works as a daily driver on a machine that I use every day and as a secondary distro as well. So that's the plan as of right now. But I do have, as of right now, NixOS actually installed in a VM. Now, like I said, this is just a VM, so what? We'll take everything I say with a grain of salt coming up forward. But I wanted to install it in a VM and actually play around with it to kind of get an idea of what I was getting myself into. Because I've never actually used NixOS for very long in the past. It was a couple hours previously. I don't think that I ever even got into the configuration file at all. I was just installing it with whatever the package manager is. So it's this one here. I guess if as you're seeing it on, on the screen, nix n I messed around with that for a couple hours. And that was my extent of my experience with NixOS in the past. So I, I literally know nothing other than that there's a crap load of people out there who really like NixOS. And they all want me to try it really, really bad. So here I am trying it. So what I wanted to do today, other than letting you guys know that my next long-term review is NixOS, is to give you guys some very early, very, very early initial impressions here. Now, all these impressions come from this virtual machine and just me messing around with it for a couple hours. So take that as you will and know that none of these views are final. I'm not going to be held to them at the end of the long-term review. I may or may not change my mind, any of that stuff. All this stuff is just from me and my initial impressions of installing it and messing around with it for a couple hours. Uh, the first impression that I have that I need to say is that the installation is pretty slow. Now, I don't know why that is, and or I don't know if that's just because it's a virtual machine or if that will be the same experience I have when I installed on hardware. I don't know yet. We'll see. Uh, but the install into this virtual machine took around 25 to 30 minutes, which is quite long for a, for a Linux install, even on a virtual machine. So that was, that was one thing that I noticed. Another thing that I, I have to say is that the documentation is... It's not great. It's not the worst documentation that I've ever seen, but it's very, it seems to be fairly technical. So I'm wondering if a dumbass like me is actually going to be able to understand half of this stuff. Uh, we'll see. I haven't done a deep dive yet, so it's possible that it's more user-friendly than what it initially appeared, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, it's one of the things that I'm mostly worried about is that there's a lot of things that you have to know in order to actually use NixOS, and if they don't explain it well in the documentation, I'm worried that I won't be able to follow through 
with all the stuff that I need to in order to do the review. So that's one thing that I'm worried about. And from the brief glimpses into the documentation I've had so far, it seems a little bit above my head. But again, I've been skipping around trying to figure out how to install a few applications and stuff like that. And I really haven't messed around any with the, the actual configuration file, which looks like this. I've just kind of taken a glance at it. And I still need to learn what this is, how it works, what I need to do in order to, you know, rebase and do all the stuff that I need to do in order to create new images and all that stuff. So, um, obviously, if you, you're a NixOS user, you're probably hearing me use some terms that aren't necessarily applicable towards NixOS. I don't know what I'm talking about yet, so forgive me there. Uh, so, in terms of the thing I'm worried about most right now is the documentation because I haven't se I haven't seen it be all that great as of yet so that's the next thing the third thing that i'm kind of I, I still have in my brain and this was a preconception that i've had and it's still kind of with, with me i'm not exactly sure that i'm interested in using a distribution that is 100 percent maintained or at least mostly maintained via configuration file now i understand the benefits of it so don't get me wrong there i think that it's cool to be able to take this configuration file and put it on my laptop or put it on my secondary hard drive and it's just going to install all the stuff that i need to install that sounds really awesome not sure if i'm interested in actually maintaining linux that way and it seems weird to me right and it probably seems weird to you because matt you're a window manager user you love configuration files you do all of your configuration for qtile and bspwm and DWM and all these window managers that you use, all that stuff is done in a configuration file. Why does this turn you away so much? And the answer to that question is I don't really know, but it doesn't feel like the way that I want to maintain Linux. I think mostly because most of this stuff in a traditional distribution is done just with a package manager, right? Now, obviously, doing it with a configuration file you get added benefits. And also, every package manager also has a configuration file, but it doesn't it's not it doesn't control the packages themselves just the package manager this here controls the actual system and that's a different paradigm than a traditional package manager so it's something that i'm still wrapping my head around and i'm not sure if i'm gonna like it i feel like i'm not gonna like it as of right now i'm going into this with a very negative attitude and i probably shouldn't i try i'm gonna try to flush that out of my system and open my mind just a little bit to see if i can actually get my head around this and if I can like it you know as I use it we'll see I'm not sure though that it's going to be a success as of right now I'm still very pessimistic about the whole outcome of this uh, when it comes to managing the configuration file and stuff like that so I'm not, I'm not sure where I'm, I'm going with that yet uh, we'll see it's another thing that I, I kind of have in the back of my brain how am I going to deal with this is it going to be good are the benefits something that are actually going to be beneficial towards me or just towards other people? So one of my initial complaints against all immutable distros was that the benefits don't really apply to most people, right? The reproducibility of an immutable distro and the idea behind being able to just kind of push them out into many machines don't really apply to most people because most people only have one machine, right? Now, a lot of us are Linux nerds. We, we have many different ThinkPads in our repertoire, in our our armory, I guess. You know, we have ThinkPads galore, so maybe we're a little bit different, I suppose. But for most normal people, the immutable aspect of things, and obviously there's more to immutability than just the reproducible aspect of them, but that's one of the key features that a lot of people point towards, and it doesn't really apply to a lot of people. So... With NixOS, I'm kind of, and, and that's especially true with NixOS. One of the things that they highly advertise is the ability to reproduce everything when it comes to NixOS, whether it's the whole system or certain environments for development. All this stuff is supposed to be reproducible down to the exact bits. And I'm not sure that that benefit is something that I really need. I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll find a use case for it. Maybe being able to transfer a configuration file from one NixOS install to another will be beneficial. I'm not sure yet, but that's one of the things that I'm definitely going to have to look at and kind of figure it out. Uh, because one of the things that I want to answer in this long-term review is, does NixOS make sense for normal people? And when I say Normal people, I'm not saying necessarily like, you know, mom, dad, and grandpa. What I'm talking about is like normal Linux users, people who just use Linux to 
basically do their normal computing activities. They're not developers. They're not uber Linux nerds. They don't do a lot of tinkering, stuff like that. Does NixOS make sense for that type of person? Or is it more like a Gen 2 or a Linux from scratch, which isn't really ever been for a normal person. It's more for a Linux nerd, someone who's really interested in tinkering, someone who's really interested in getting to, into the deep dive of their system so that they can do basically whatever they want. So I'm that's one of the questions that I really want to answer. And the thing is, and my biggest issue here going forward is going to be getting my preconceptions out of the way and keeping an open mind. Because I do have some very negative thoughts on where this review is going to go. So I'm going to have to kind of get in my brain and kind of root all that stuff out just so I can install it and, and just experience it as a normal person without those preconceptions would. And if I can do that, then I'm more likely to come out of this with a better result than if I go into it negative and then just experience everything in a negative kind of light and if that ha happens it's more likely the end result's going to be me thinking that this is a bad distro uh, and i don't want to taint the the review in that fashion so i'm going to work on getting in that open mind and try, try to find the benefits of nixos and really the question that must be answered at least for me personally is why do so many people like this thing so damn much what is it about NixOS that has drawn such a crowd of Linux nerds to my comments sections, to my Discord, uh, to my Mastodon, literally everywhere? These people follow me around like stalkers, telling me that I have to try NixOS because it's awesome, it's amazing, you gotta use it. I need to figure out why those people like it so much. That That's what I need to figure out. That's my overarching question that I need to have answered during this review. Why do people like it so much? Why do why, why have they become so not an not only enamored with this distribution, but they are very interested in telling everyone how awesome NixOS is? Why has that happened? Because I don't know. I haven't been I, from what little I know of NixOS. I don't understand it, and I, I definitely want to know. So those are the things that I'm going to be looking for. My initial very early initial impressions and. I think that's probably where I'll stop this now. So over the course of the next few months, you'll probably expect to see a few NixOS videos from me. Uh, then it won't like happen every week or anything like that. Probably once a month or so. We'll see how that goes. I'm, I'm, I don't have anything truly planned yet, but I will do a few very specific feature videos over the course of the next couple of months or so, depending on how long this review actually lasts. I'm expecting it to be a few months at least. I'm not I'm not going to aim I don't think I'm going to be able to get the sense of NixOS in just a single month which is used to be my long term review. I'll I'll push it out to at least 2 months and probably go further than that just like I did with Debian. So, uh, we'll see how this goes. So, NixOS, the next long term review is in progress. I'll be installing it on my hardware this evening and uh, we'll see how all this goes. So, it, you can expect on my social media accounts of Mastodon and in Discord You'll probably expect me to be talking about this quite a bit going forth. So uh, that is what happens next. Now, for those of you who are wondering, Matt, how does this, you know, kind of mesh with your two-year Linux challenge and uh, your OpenSUSE fanboyness? Well, OpenSUSE is going nowhere. OpenSUSE will be on the main hard drive of my main computer, where I'll be using that uh, the vast majority of the time. The the laptop will be where I be. be reviewing NixOS, and then I'll have NixOS on the secondary hard drive of this computer as well. So I'll kind of be using them side by side, but OpenSUSE has my heart, uh, and uh, it just continues to get better, guys. Uh, OpenSUSE is fantastic, and uh, I guess I'm... I'm I'm to OpenSUSE like the NixOS users are to their, their own distro. They really like NixOS. I'm the OpenSUSE fanboy now. You should use OpenSUSE. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. It really does help the channel. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. If you're interested in merchandise, which I do have a whole bunch of, you can head on over to shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find t-shirts and hats and 
backpacks and there's a brand new desk mat that I just created up there which is looks really really cool I'm gonna have to get myself one of those because it looks really awesome so there there's that so if you want to support the channel and you want something really cool in return head on over to shop.thelinuxcast.org it'd really help the channel thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon, YouTube, and Kofi I really do appreciate that as well and uh, that here's a list of all those people so thank you so guys so very much for your support I truly do appreciate it you guys are all awesome and without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very very much for your support thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time